Life is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere and anytime at all. Down here in the Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Unrooted Women's Soccer Edition. And my guest for this week's show was none other than junior defender on the women's soccer team here at Menlo College, Mercedes Beckham. Mercedes, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me back. You're very welcome. Now I want to talk about what happened when we had you on here the first time. I didn't know this until after the show because we, we pick songs after the show, but you chose one of the most amazing songs I have ever experienced in the history of this show, the Campfire Song song. That is the song that you had set to introduce your Unrooted episode two years ago. Tell the viewers why you chose that incredibly amazing <laughs> song to be forever linked to your Unrooted debut. I really don't know what happened. I was sitting here trying to think of a song and for some reason that's the song that came to my head and said why not just do it that makes almost no sense to me because <laughs> because if you think about music I I, as I imagine most people would think about music they're going to think about you know hip-hop country <laughs> pop music something like that old school not Spongebob Squarepants it's such a it's it's it was so weird, but it was so awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to have an awesome song intro. I hope this one's even better. Yeah, you're up on the Mount Rushmore now. I'm very excited as we get into this interview to get to the end of the interview because <laughs> I want to find out exactly what song she is going to pick. Um, so obviously, you are a big SpongeBob fan because you chose the Campfire Song song. Yeah, you don't really have any favorite episodes we're talking off the air about yeah, this. Yeah, no, I don't have any favorite episodes. I do like to quote Spongebob a lot, so. So you, so your favorite episodes are more favorite moments oh, versus yeah. favorite episodes. I would have to say, and I haven't seen this one in a long time, that's because I must be getting old and I hate that, but I think my, one of my favorite scenes is probably all time the snowball fight <laughs> where they're going through the role play of Spongebob, Squidward, and Patrick and one of them's going to be Mr. Krabs yeah. and one of them's going to be Squidward and <laughs> that, <laughs> that scene is one of my absolute favorite of the entire show. That's a great scene. Yeah, I, and, and creepily enough I at one point in my life had the entire thing memorized. <laughs> that entire like I could play every single role from every <laughs> single person and just spit it back at you because that's useless knowledge, and that was exactly what I was good at. Yeah, we all have useless knowledge. What's yours? Um, I don't. Uh, I have so many SpongeBob quotes. I can ask one of my friends, and I'll be like, "Can you move?" It was actually the laptop, and we we're trying to move it down, and she was like, uh, "Can you move the lid?" And I was like, "I knew exactly what she was talking about, and I just moved it." And then it's just like the lid, the lid, the lid. The lid. That's la 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 <laughs> freeze. <laughs> right on the lid. Yeah. That's well, well done. And, and it's funny too because we were talking about the lid before this episode yeah. got going and now we bring it back full circle in the first question of the show. The lid. That's a fantastic start. We're talking about <laughs> Spongebob. But let's talk a little soccer now. I That's think great. one of the strengths to your game is that you have great consistency with the way that you play. You never seem to put yourself in a bad position on the field. As a true defender, how much work goes into your positioning and knowing about where to anticipate the other team is going to attack? Um, I Thank you for calling me consistent. I think that's one of, my, uh, one of the goals I've always had uh, since high school as playing a center back. Um, but I really don't know what comes into it. I know I like to watch a lot of women's soccer and it's different than men's soccer and it's not very common for many people to say I prefer women's soccer over men's soccer. But I went to France I watched almost every single World Cup, Women's World Cup game. I love just watching women's soccer and I think the knowledge that comes into it of just watching the game on an osmosis or something yeah. helps out. Uh, but I really just, I try, I like, I really don't know how to explain. No, I mean, it, it can be a very difficult thing to try and explain it if it's something that you've been A, working at for so long, but that also B, it's fairly vague like you're trying to explain how you're consistent right like I understand that it's not it's not something you can just quantify to right yeah but uh, so as as 
as a coach, let's say for Coach Lawton trying to work on the defenders, how, how is he helping make sure that you guys are in the right spot? Uh, we definitely focus on defending because defending is how you win games and just working together as a team uh, and how, whether we're playing with three backs or four backs, how we move together and I think just how much time we spend together. We spend an extra two weeks uh, before school starts and that's really just all. You see the women's soccer team and we see each other 24-7. We live with each other. We're on the same hall. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that's really important, just building the team chemistry, especially with this team, because we're just so new. Yeah, I've heard that from every single fall <laughs> sport team so far this season, yeah. and it, it rings true. The, the yeah. longer preseason that you all had this year, the time spent together helped building your team chemistry yeah. and moving you into the regular season. Now, Menlo only had one game last week. It was a loss at home to Cal State Monterey Bay. They certainly proved to be a very tough adversary in the contest. What were you able to take away from that game? Uh, one thing definitely to take away was how things, just the ways other teams could break us down. It was seen in uh, that game and something that we actually worked on today at practice. It was one of the ways they broke us down. We um, were able to work on that, talk about it as a team, because it was something we had never seen before from any of our other opponents. And then just some, we also were able to notice some of the good things that we did and say like yes the score was four to one but we did do good we had good moments we just needed to execute on and just oh, i forgot the word you just wanted to execute yeah we need to execute and just be more precise with our passing and uh at the end of the day we definitely could hang could hang with them and it didn't show in the score line i think that's something that we need to um take away from that game is Yes, it was 4-1, but it easily could have been not 4-1, something closer, maybe a tie or a win. Yeah, definitely. And, and, I mean, the Oaks very well could have been a situation where they didn't score, but Corianne Coverman had yeah. a fantastic play, intercepting a ball on defense, taking it all the way in herself, shooting and scoring. Is she one of the most dynamic players in the conference with how quickly she can turn around a game? I think that Corey, she's great she's a true forward and I think that's something that we needed and anyone from Corey we just needed that one play to happen to to really show us that yeah any one of us could have done that glad it was Corey I think coming into her second year she has she did so much her first year and I think she has so much to grow somewhere to grow um, in her future and I'm really excited to watch that this year and the next year and even when I'm gone. If she's got room to grow, then the rest of the conference better watch yeah, out exactly. because she's going to be one heck of a player for her exactly. final two and a half years. Definitely gotten a lot smarter from last year, just a soccer smart. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Look out, rest of the GSAC, <laughs> look out. Yeah. Two games coming up this week for the Oaks. First, you have Sierra Nevada College on Thursday, which is one day before this episode releases, but you have a bit of a longer an earlier trip up yeah. to Sierra Nevada on Thursday morning. Is that longer trip something that you and the ladies are going to have to adjust to? Oh, definitely. I think uh, it's our first It's our first game we're going to go to so far this year. So I think uh, you really have to, a lot of us, us returners are going to have to explain to the freshmen, you know, that's not something you take lightly. Yes, we're going to be sitting in a bus for however long it takes us four or five hours to get there and then you gotta get ready to play and your mindset has to be there from the minute you have to get out of bed at whatever time we're mm -hmm. leaving five and take a nap but not have it be too long it's just something you, like I've learned throughout my last two years that it's knowledge that you have to give to the rest of the team and uh, you know I'm just really excited for it I love Sierra Nevada's uh, good competition I'm excited to play again and it's in a beautiful location yes up it there. is that is the if it's the same place we played freshman year I trees all around the field it's great oh yeah. It, yeah it's wonderful up there especially this time of year but 5 a.m. to leave <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I would not be so excited. You said you were excited. I don't I know if I'd be excited for that aspect of it. I'm excited for every aspect of game day. I was gonna say you're just excited for for some I soccer. Like to play soccer. That, that's all you want right there. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's 5 a.m., 4 a.m., <laughs> 3 a.m. Give yeah. me some soccer. Now you're back at home on Saturday after you come back from that long trip against UC Santa Cruz, a team that the Oaks have tangled with many times in the past. The Oaks have won three straight games against the Slugs. What will it take to make it four straight? We have to be Menlo College women's soccer. We know. We know them and in a way they don't know us. This is a new team. When I came in freshman year, the only people that are still here is me, Allie, and Ari. Mm -hmm. So within two years, it's a completely different team. So I think that's something that every team that's playing against us is going to have to see. And I just know that we're definitely going to make it four. We know how to play our game and the goal is to have us play our game. They try to combat it and move. We're going to do pretty well. And they're going to win. Yes, 1 o'clock, Wonderlick Field, Saturday, the Oaks and the Slugs. Mercedes Beckham has already called her shot <laughs> right here on Unrooted. Yeah. Let's get into the final segment of the show. Ordinarily, they're called brownie bites, but today we're going to call them pipsqueak patties in yeah. honor of SpongeBob. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Give me your best answers. All right. Question number one, which teammate most resembles Sandy Cheeks? I'm going to say Haley Stoddard because Sandy, she's intelligent she's really just she knows karate she knows science and Haley is she's just so intelligent in honestly anything in soccer and she, Sandy who has two best friends of Spongebob and Patrick I feel like our entire team is full of Spongebob and Patrick <laughs> and we all need Sandy in our lives to help clean up the messes that we make on and off the field I mean and Haley's been there for every single one of us. And that's Haley's role. I like it. Does yeah. she know karate as well? Uh, no. Okay, that would have that would have been very eerily. She knows creepy. accounting though. So. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> so, so she's got the brain. So yeah. she's she's got the smarts. I, I don't know. Eh, we'll, we'll work on the karate aspect. Yeah, we're gonna of work it. on karate. Team karate. <laughs> Team karate. Yes. Look out. Question number two: Which teammate could solve any problem by switching it to Wumbo? I think Corey. <laughs> Corey's. <laughs> very Corey like and if you switch anything into Corey language you you can get a great answer I know we ended up all calling her out last year on Unrooted <laughs> when she said there was 76 <laughs> colonies that was awesome but if you would have I don't know how you would have phrased the question properly but Corey just likes to blurt out answers very confidently and you just really look at her and be like did you really just say that and she's like no, no 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 and she'll change it to the correct answer I'm like Corey why didn't you just say that in the first yeah, place yeah so I think definitely Corey so yeah she it, <laughs> so what you're saying basically is that at first blurting out, Corey is going to actually think that Wumbo is a real thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. But now that we're explaining this, Corey, Wumbo is not real. <laughs> but if you try switching it to Wumbo, maybe, 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 maybe something maybe, will. Yeah, yeah exactly. maybe you'll be able to figure out whatever issue you have. Exactly. Question number three. If you could choose one teammate to run the Krusty Krab 2, who would it be and why? I think our whole team would be able to run the Krusty Krab too. We all have our different aspects of why we'd be able to run it. But I think for CEO purposes, I would say Zoe. That's a bit ironic, isn't yeah. it? Don't you think? But it's going to see, that's why the whole team's going to be there. So Zoe's going to be CEO because she's definitely just has the leadership qualities to be CEO and everything. But then there's going to be people on the side like me to be like, no, we're going to have some real meat. Okay. But there's also going to be the vegan, gluten-free side, just yeah. for Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Now that I think about this, though, I may have been too quick to jump. Because if you notice in the show, Krabby Patties are never at any point in time referred to burgers. And we yeah. don't know what goes <laughs> into the patties. That's very true. So it might not be meat at all, in which case maybe it is already <laughs> vegan-friendly. <laughs> in some capacity yeah they never they never call them burgers it's always sandwiches sandwiches or patties they never call them burgers very true even though they obviously resemble burgers, burgers so yes. may maybe zoe wouldn't be the oddest of choices <laughs> for that true. but if they were hamburgers 
then I would then my laughter would definitely <laughs> yeah. be justified at that point. Mercedes, thanks for joining me on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, folks. The women's soccer team, they're on the road Thursday. Episode drops on Friday, and then they're back at home on Saturdays. Menlo College Women's Soccer hosts UC Santa Cruz at Wonderlick Field. Game starts at 1 o'clock, and Ryan Barnett will have the play-by-play -play live on the Menlo College Sports Network if you can't make it out. We invite you to tune into the next episode of Unrooted Women's Soccer Edition when Mercedes Beckham will select the next interviewee by me, Brian Brownfield, right here on the show. Until then, we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere and anytime at all. Down here in the deep blue sea.